sorry about that. Let's get this thing cooperating this morning. Good morning. Hope everybody's doing well. It is Friday. Friday morning. And uh, praise the Lord. He let us get up again. He gave us another day. Another day. To live another day to serve him. That's what it's all about. Good morning. Hope everybody's looking. Hope everybody's getting in here. At some point during the day, get your one a day vitamin. Get your chapter. It takes more than one. I say this every morning. <laughs> one chapter a day is not enough. But one chapter a day ought to, ought to spur you and, and incite you and encourage you to get another chapter. So today we're in Ephesians chapter six. Ephesians chapter 6, so find your Bible, <laughs> go to the car and get it, whatever you got to do. Amen. One of the things that we've been doing at the church, me and Sally's been working with teenagers again for the time being and teaching the teen Sunday school class. And it's a common every Sunday morning question. Uh, where's your Bible? I'm not going to call names. I could call names. I say it every Sunday morning to the same people. <laughs> Where's your Bible? Uh, uh, teenage boys, teenage girls. Uh, uh, I, 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 uh, I left it in the, in the car. Uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> hey, that's one of the reasons we started this. I'm trying to get our teenagers to read their Bible enough that they know where their Bible is and they can find it on a daily basis. Praise the Lord. Just trying to get people in the Word of God. I'm convinced more than ever that Scripture is the secret. If there's a secret, it's Scripture. We need the Word of God. God gave us His Word. God spoke through His Word. God feeds us through His Word. God guides us through His Word. God comforts us through His Word. Um, it, it's the Word of God, and we need the Bible. And so I'm uh, excited about getting up, reading, studying. Been doing this now, I guess, for a week. Uh, maybe even more. We're in Ephesians chapter 6. So I know that's six days. We did Galatians before that. So that's uh, probably 11 days or so that we've been doing this. And we'll go into Philippians in the morning. Bright and early. Praise the Lord. Uh, I told somebody again, I probably said it on here, that... I, I've had several people say that this encourages and this helps, and I'm glad. Um, everything I do, I, see, I guess there seems to be an element of selfishness because this helps me. <laughs> it helps me to get up in the morning. It helps me to get in my Bible. It helps me to read this one chapter to, to begin with, and then we get more. Um, after we turn the camera off, it helps me to pray and study and, and do that, so... Uh, if, if you're sitting there thinking that I got out of the bed this morning and came in here and got all this set up just for you, I did, <laughs> but it's for me too. And uh, I'm thankful that the Lord lets us get a blessing when we serve others and when we do for others. Had an opportunity <clears throat> yesterday to go fishing. Uh, hadn't done that in over a year and had a, a, a friend, uh, really just an acquaintance from, from back in, Doc Brown's days that we ran into at Miss Brown's funeral and, and viewing. And he said, I want to take you fishing. He said, I got a friend that's a guide. He said, I want you to go fishing with me. And, and so he worked it all out. He called me, said, Hey, here's the day we can go. And I said, I'll make it happen. And so I got to go. And he also took, uh, both Pat Feastel and both Pat's son, Tucker with us. And so we, we went fishing, went up to, to Clark's Hill, went up to the big, big Atlantic Ocean, uh, north of, uh, <laughs> north of Augusta. And I'm talking about, we caught some fish. I think it was 46 or 47 fish <clears throat> that we kept. Tucker caught a couple of big stripers. Um, and we just had a great time. I enjoyed the fire out of it. And it was, it was wonderful. Uh, it, it makes me, here I am, 67 years old, and wore out, tired. It makes me want to go buy a boat <laughs> and start fishing. Uh, but, but, but that ain't going to happen. <laughs> I still got a wife. <laughs> yes, sir. A boat ain't nothing but a hole in the water to pour money in. 
Just remember that before you run out and buy your boat. But it sure was fun. And we had to go with a guide. He, he, this is my friend actually, uh, hired and paid a guide to take us. And that's, I think that's the way to go. Uh, they buy the boat. They take care of the boat. They buy the, the rods, the reels, the bait, the whole thing. And they know where to fish. And all you do is give them a little bit of money. Uh, and I paid way less than a boat payment <laughs> to go and catch fish. And then we got, I guess, probably four or five, six meals of, of fish packed up in the freezer, uh, ready to go. God was good to us. We had a good day. But I am a little crispy around the edges. I wore a hat. My, my ears are burned. My face is burned. <laughs> Just a little crispy, but it'll be all right. Praise the Lord. Ephesians, you, you didn't get over here this morning to hear my problems. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Let's, let's read, okay? <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. I, I, I read this yesterday. I read it again last night, uh, reading through the chapter three or four times yesterday. And every time I read that verse, children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. I, 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 there, there ain't nothing in me that says that children are, are commanded to do wrong if their parents tell them to do wrong. Amen. <laughs> Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and singleness of heart, of your heart, as unto Christ. Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free, and ye masters do the same things unto them. Forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of, of persons with him. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. As for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, a, bre a, 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 Tychicus, a beloved brother, and faithful minister in the Lord shall make known to you all things whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose that you might know our affairs and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren and love with faith uh, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Well, when you, when you go and you look at the book of Ephesians, we've been laying out how the, the book of Ephesians is about the church. It's church age doctrine. I want you to think about that. It's church age doctrine. It's church age teaching. Uh, you don't hear a whole lot about it anymore. This is the church is the body of Christ. The church is a called out assembly. The church is a, a, I, I wrote some things down. Uh, I found that 114 times in the New Testament, the word church or churches is, is mentioned. 114 times. Only 15 times does it not refer to a place, a specific body, a specific gathering, a local church. <laughs> Out of 114, only 15 
refer to to something other than like like um the rapture of the church the the whole body it refers to a specific place a local place the the church when when you think about a true biblical church the true church is a local church it it it's it's uh, Bill Landrum, that some of this stuff comes to me while I'm sitting here talking to you and I have to dig around in the dust. <laughs> I have to <laughs> blow some stuff off to get it to work. Bill Landrum used to use the word indigenous, an indigenous local church. And, and that indigenous means of that area, of that local group. An indigenous group is, is a group that's in that area. When you go into an area, whether it be in South Augusta or South Africa, and you start a church and, and it's to be indigenous, it's made up of people from that area, from that group. Your church should represent your locale, your area. It should be made up of people. If, if I went into, uh, <laughs> good morning, brother Mark, good morning, brother Benny, it, brother Ricky, if, if I went into, uh, Blackshear, Georgia, and I started a church for Yankees that would not be indigenous. That would be people that were transplanted that I could probably get a good crowd because most intelligent Yankees come south. Uh, <laughs> please forgive me. But anyway, but it's true. No, indigenous is of that lo lo location. It's of that area and, and, and to be there. So the church is to be a local church. Uh, it, the, the church at, at Ephesus, the church at Galatia, the church at, at Philemon, at, at Philippi, at Philippi. Uh, I'll get it in a minute. I tell you, it's dusty up there. And so when you think about that, so the local church, the, the church is to be local. A scriptural biblical church is local. And then it's visible. You can see it. It's not something invisible. It's not something, something that, that cannot assemble, serve, preach, do, you know, give fellowship. Uh, all those things. The church is, is to do that. I wrote these things down. The church is, is to be, uh, a church that can assemble, serve, preach, baptize, fellowship, give, evangelize. Uh, all those things are to be done by the church, the local church, the local church. So w when you see that, it's local, it's visible, it's organized. It's not in chaos. The, the, the scriptural church has authority. It has officers. It has pastors and deacons. It has people that, that are over. It has ordinances. It has, it has regulations. And, and, and you have to have that. Oh, what, 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 what kind of church do you go to? Well, it's non-denominational. It's non, we, we don't have any rules. We don't have, no, they do have rules. <laughs> they, I've said this before. It said, no, your church is one of them old fashioned churches. Y'all got a dress code. Y'all got a dress code too. I promise you. <laughs> Some of y'all fix to stand on your head, but, but y'all got a dress code. No, we can come like we are. We can come. <laughs> well, I'm going to walk in, in my boxer shorts. I'm going to try to be a little bit decent. <laughs> I'm going to walk in in my boxer shorts. I guarantee you, I sashay down the aisle in my boxer shorts. Somebody's going to escort me out the building. I don't care how liberal, I don't care how modern, I don't care how enlightened, <laughs> I don't care how uh uh whatever you want to call yourself. If I go strolling into my boxer shorts, you're gonna throw me out. You got a dress code. Don't say you don't. And and a real scriptural biblical truth has authority. They have a pastor, they have, they have rules, they have code, they have standards. Amen. Local, visible, organized. And, and the, a scriptural church is Jesus's church. It's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's the head. He is the head of, of the church. The church is what we're, what we're listening, what we're looking at. Ephesians is written to the church. Ephesians are written. And the church age is the dispensation, the period of time that we're living in. God deals with people different in different dispensations. That's what a dispensation is. It's a, it's a specific, specific period of time where God deals with people in, in specific ways. God walked in the garden in the age of innocence before sin. God walked in the garden and talked to Adam 
He spoke to them. He walked with them. He called to them he, it, verbally, out loud. God talked to them. God doesn't do that now. He could, but God has chosen not to do that. God in the church age is, is calling a bride for his son. The whole church age is about calling out sinners, getting people saved, getting them back in the family of God and assembling a bride for Christ. It's assembling a bride. We looked at it yesterday in chapter five, how that it talks about wives submitting, husbands loving, all those things. And he says at the very end of it, he said, this is a mystery, verse 32, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. The church is a picture. Marriage is a picture of the church in Jesus. And, and we're right now we're living in the day when God is putting together a bride. Everybody wants to talk about the kingdom. I, the, the, this is my hobby horse, I guess. This is my, this is the burr under my saddle. Everybody wants to talk about the kingdom. Everybody wants to get kingdom blessings and kingdom power and kingdom lit. The kingdom will come and we're to pray thy kingdom come, but it ain't here. We will be part of, we will be part of the kingdom. But this is the church age and God's doing church work right now. That, that when you get back to church doctrine, you'll figure out why a lot of your doctrine, a lot of your stuff is messed up. We're in the church age. The church age runs from whenever the church started. I'm going to be real careful right here because some of y'all may get sideways from whenever the church started until the rapture. That's the church age from Calvary to the rapture. From Pentecost to the rapture, whatever you want to say, wherever you want to start the church, from the disciples to the rapture, wherever you want to start the church. I personally believe Calvary. I personally believe that, 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 that that's where it started. Before that, Old Testament saints went to paradise. We talked about that the other day. And, and then they were taken into heaven after Calvary. Then to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. I believe that's church. And, and that, that's where we're at. So we've read the chapter. We've looked at it. Let's look at a couple of specific things. If again, if we tried to cover everything in these verses, uh, we'd be here for, for a lifetime. <laughs> You'll never exhaust the well of, of the scriptures. You can get in Ephesians chapter six and spend the rest of your life digging and feeding and praying and learning and growing. And, 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 and expounding and, and sharing the word of God. Ephesians chapter six is one of those chapters. There's a lot of them, but Ephesians chapter six is one of those chapters where there's just so much that you, you open the Bible, you read the first line in chapter six and you go, wow, children obey your parents of the Lord. The Bible gives us family instruction. It gives us home instruction. It tells you, you say, why is a home? Why the family? Why are children? Why, why are, why are marriages in such a trouble? Cause they do not have a Bible. They're not listening. They're not reading. They're not applying. They're not, not letting the Bible guide and govern their life. Our, our country's in a mess. Our world's in a mess. Children, obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment we promised. We were talking yesterday with some people. We, 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 we were, we were talking with some people and, and somebody said something about a, a, a child being rebellious and disobedient. And I said, man, <laughs> I, that, that wouldn't have happened. That wouldn't have happened. When, when, when I was a kid, mm, I can remember my daddy grabbing me. <laughs> I'm talking about physically put his hands on me and said, don't ever talk to your mama like that again. If I ever hear that again, and, and I promise you, <laughs> I, my mama never hit me in church. She never, I don't think she ever hit me in church, but I still got a bruise <laughs> where she pinched me right in my side. I'm going to tell you, she'd grab a handful and she'd just and twist, <laughs> stand you on your head, but you better not move because everybody's looking. We in church. <laughs> and, and we, we just didn't act that way. Honor thy father and mother. Honor thy father. You better. You better. You'd be picking up chiclets. Somebody knock all your teeth out. <laughs> that it may be well with thee. And thou mayest live long on the earth. You want to read verse three like it really says? Verse, verse, verse one, two, and three. 
Obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother or they will kill you. <laughs> that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. Now, we know, we know that that's a promise from God. God said that if we, we would obey that promise, if we'd obey that, 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 that commandment, that He would bless us. That He would. But I promise you, God, God would have never got a chance to deal with me if I'd have acted the way some of these kids today act. God would have never got a chance. My daddy would have killed me. It'd been over with. That they may live long on the earth. Nope, he's gone. <laughs> you fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in nurture and admonition of the Lord. That, that verse always convicts me as I look back and I, I see the way I raised my kids before salvation. I didn't get saved until I was 34 years old. I, the way, the way that I did, I'm, I'm absolutely sure that I provoked my children more than I, more than I nurtured. I'm absolutely sure that as, as a lost man, I did it all backwards. I'm also thankful for the forgiveness of God and the mercy of God and the favor of God. That where I did everything wrong, God has turned. God has done great things. Servants, be obedient to them, your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Servants and masters. That's old, old fashioned language, but you can apply it today to job and boss. And you've got a boss, you're, you're to work as unto Christ, not with eye service. I service, somebody said, is working while you're being watched. <laughs> Do you work with I service? Do you work when the boss is looking and then, then goof off when the boss ain't looking? When, when, when the cat's away, the, the mice will play. I've heard it said on the, on, in, in the workplace. Do we work with I service to be seen as men pleasers? But as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, with good will, doing service as to the Lord, not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. If you do right, you'll be blessed. You'll be favored. We were talking yesterday on the boat with Brother Jesse, and we were talking about the favor of God. How that when, when, when you just, when you're good to people, God's good to you. When you do the will of God, God will bless you. He'll favor you. It's a blessing. We were sitting there yesterday morning. I'll post some pictures later uh, of, of our fishing trip. And we, we we left the dock. We left the boat ramp right at, at daylight. We pulled out into the lake, a big, big open lake out in front of us. And the sun, after we got anchored up, the sun was just starting to come over the tops of the, the horizon. I took a picture. And I said, that's not a bad view out the office window this morning. <laughs> That's not a bad view out the office window. You know what? Brother Jesse said, favor, favor. That's the favor of God. That, that when you do it, God just favors us. He's good to us. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Notice it says in you masters, those of you that are in control, those of you that are in authority, do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening. Don't, don't threaten knowing that your master also is in heaven. <laughs> Be careful how you treat people under you because you have one over you. <laughs> That's what it says. Be careful how you treat the people you have authority over because there is authority over you. There is a master in heaven. Neither is there respect of persons with him. In other words, he's going to treat everybody the same. You do good, he treats you good. You do bad, he's going to treat you bad. Don't care who you are. There's no respect of persons. Then he comes down and the warfare, you think about the, the, the end of this chapter is the end of the book. He's given us doctrinal truth, chapters one through three. He's given us practical truth and practical application in four, five, and six. He, he's, he's given us these things that, that the church is a body. The church will be a bride. The church is a temple. Um, we said, I believe in chapter number, uh, Three, the church is a mystery. All of these things. And now he's coming down to the end of this and he says that the church is going to be a soldier. You, you, you better be ready to fight. You better be ready. Put on the whole armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God 
you, you better get suited up because if you're going to serve the Lord, if you're going to walk with God, if you're going to do these things that, that here, if you're going to be a good husband, a good wife, a good father, a good child, the devil's going to come against you. We wrestle not. Make sure you understand this. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. What, who are you fighting? Who are you fighting? He started out these chapters, if you remember, chapter number three, and, and he, he said, who hath bewitched you? Who? Maybe that was in Galatians that I'm thinking about. He said, who hath bewitched you? In, in Galatians, who hath, hath, hath hindered you? Who? A person. But then he comes to the end of this, chapter six, and he says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That who, that who has a power behind it. As the church, the Christian has a, a power and an authority over us, the lost world and, and those false brethren and those that hinder and draw away, those also have a power over them. Did you come to get on camera with me? No, you did not. <laughs> she, she grinning ear to ear and going all the way around so she don't get in the camera. You want me to turn it over there? You want me to turn it over there? <laughs> yeah, I Anyhow, notice that it, it, it says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're not fighting against people. If you woke up this morning and, and you think your battle is against a, a, a person, well, my wife, my husband, my, my, my teenager, my, my, if you just knew what my mother-in-law, if you just knew what, what my boss, it, think about that. <laughs> Miss Kathy, I'm just playing. She's smiling. We're all in a good mood. Everything's good. I pick on that woman more. I'm talking about way, way more. And uh, she puts up with a lot. <laughs> anyway, notice that he says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But he does not say we, that we wrestle, that we don't wrestle. He promises us a warfare. He promises us a wrestling match. He promises that we're going to wrestle, but not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I, I, the best way I know how to explain it, I guess Brother Landrum taught us, is that God has authority and God has a chain of command and God has his people that are, are, are in, in the battle. You, and, and you can even look, there's, there's, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There, there, there's man. There's wife. There's children. There, there's a, there's a, an order to God's world. Yeah. You, you have the angels. You have all, and everybody's got their place. Everybody's got their business. You've got the different angels, and we won't go into all this this morning. You, you've got the different angels and the different powers and authorities that they have. The archangels and and the cherubims and different ones do different things. And, and all of them have different assignments. I believe every angel has a place and a purpose and, and, and is, is assigned. It was created for that purpose. I believe the same thing about you. Same thing about you, that you have a place and a purpose and you were created for that purpose. And Satan's going to fight you just like God has his armies. The Bible says God had uh, that, uh, that, that Satan has his ministers just like God has his places, his church. The Bible says that, that Satan has his. He has his powers. And, and so when you see principalities and powers and, and the rulers of darkness, it's talking about the satanic organization, the satanic authority that, that's in our world, that the devil has his rulers, the devil has his place. Uh, Revelation talks about the seat of Satan, where he sits. Uh, and he's got his people, his angels that are over in specific locations. I believe if the church is a local organization and, and an indigenous, indigenous local, local church that Satan has his angels, his demons that are over certain areas and certain places and certain people. Uh, that, that's the way that it works. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle, we wrestle absolutely, but it's against demonic forces. And so we have to put on the armor of God. The Bible says in, I think it's first Corinthians that, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not fleshly. 
We don't fight with, with, with human weapons. We don't fight with, 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 with earthly man-made physical fleshly tools and, and weapons, but we put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Uh, we wherefore take unto you the verse 13, the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. We won't go through the rest of the chapter, but you can read and, and you see the things that, that are there. You see the things that the, the pieces of the armor that we're to put on. And then Paul ends with prayer. He says that, that we ought to pray for one another. And he said, while you're praying for each other, while you're praying, uh, verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching there too with all perseverance and their supplication for all saints. And then he said, as for me, pray for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Paul said, I'm under attack. And so we need to get back in this thing and understand that we're in a battle, but we have the, 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 the armor. We have the weapons. The Bible said the sword of the spirit. When you don't get in your Bible, spirit is weaponless. When you don't hide the word of God in your heart, when, when you don't get in this and, 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 and meditate and read and study to show thyself approved, then you leave the Holy Spirit within you without a sword. This is the sword of the spirit. This is not the spirit of, of the preacher. This is not the sword of the man. This is not my weapon. <laughs> this is my food. But as I read this, I equip the spirit in me with the sword of the spirit. And he uses this. He does this. Amen. All right. I've been too long again this morning. I got to get off this thing and uh, get some things done today. But I hope that you read and we'll be back again in the morning somewhere around 730. We'll be in, in the book of Philippians. Read ahead a little bit. Study. Ask questions. Make notes. Send me a message if you got questions. You, you say, I don't want to put anything on here public. Then send me a private message. We'll try to answer um, if I can't figure out an answer, Gal. <laughs> Sally said I could ask Gal. If, if I can't figure out the answer, if I can't help you with with what you what you're digging and digging and, and studying on, uh, then I'll ask Sally, yeah. and Sally can go talk to Gal for me, and then we'll all get together. We'll we'll find somebody. What I'm trying to say, we'll find somebody. The, the answer's in the book. I guarantee you. And we'll get in this thing and we'll find something for you. Praise the Lord. All right. Y'all have a great day.